I would like to appeal to you atheists out there. Just give me a moment of your time. I want you to consider an argument, okay? I want you to look at the Ten Commandments that are recorded in the Bible a little bit differently. I want you to think about them departing from them in a religious context and just look at them from a purely scientific Divorce your emotions from it. Oh, a organized religion. Just leave it aside for a minute. Let's go through the Ten Commandments, and I'm going to show you show you a different way to interpret it. Exodus chapter 20. This is a King James Bible, the greatest Bible that has ever been written. That is a historical fact, a documented, scientifically verifiable fact. No other Bible in history has gone into this many printings. Again, it's not a matter of emotion. It's a matter of the truth. The most published book in the history of the world is the King James Bible, which first came out in 1611 as the authorized version, more commonly called today the King James Version, or the King James Bible, as I prefer to call it. Let's start out here. We're going to go through the Ten Commandments, and I'm going to give you a different way of interpreting this that even you could agree to if you are truly logical and scientific. Please bear with me. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's commandment number one. Commandment number two, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's commandment number three. For, thou, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. There's number four. Commandment number four. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, here's commandment number five. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And then you have 6 through 10 coming in rapid succession here. It says, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay? Um, if you're a very young uh, man or woman out there, you might understand, you might not understand that ass is the Bible word for donkey. Okay, just to clear that up, you might not understand that, just to make that clear. But now let's look at this thing, and let's just say, let's forget that the Bible is a religious book used by religion. Forget that. This is a historical document. That cannot be disputed. That is a scientifically verifiable um, piece of evidence. This book has manuscript evidence that that underlies it and everything extant, Greek and Hebrew manuscripts that go back for thousands of years. There's no question that the Bible is a historical document. Now let's think about this. Uh, commandment number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, divorcing religion from that, wouldn't it be nice if there was only one God? Do you realize what that would do? That would get rid of all religious divides and disputes and whatever else because there would only be one God. There wouldn't be Buddha and, and Allah and Jesus and, you know, and down through the different ones. Just one God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Wouldn't it be good if all people could just agree to just have one God? Would that be that offensive to you as an atheist? See, I want you, the, the whole purpose of the study, I'm just going to spoil it right up front. The whole purpose of this study is to get you to realize your problem's not really with this book. You can look at this book as a historical document. You can look at this book and say, you know, there's some really good things in there, some moral things that are good. And the Bible records some evil things that people did in the past that were horrible. You can look at it as a historical document. See, your problem's not really with the book. Your problem's with the hypocrites in the church buildings. And you know what? 
they're my problem too. I don't like them either. But you see, I don't take it out on this book. I accept this book for what it is. I understand the book. I read the book. I believe the book. Let's look at the second commandment. Verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thy, down thyself to them, nor serve them. And it goes on. Okay? Divorcing religion from fact here. Wouldn't it be great if there were no religious idols anywhere? There's no pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina and the holy city of this and, and St. Peter's Basilica and you go in there and you do the stations of the cross and you go and you crawl on your knees, you know, up to see a, a little baby doll that uh, Mary appeared to a little girl at a well and said, here you go, you know, and, and now you can have it enshrined in a glass case up there and there's armed guards up there, you know, go, go say your special rosaries to the idol. Wouldn't it be nice if people actually followed the second commandment? I mean... Honestly, seriously, be honest with yourself. Wouldn't it be nice if there were no religious statues? No idols? Wouldn't that be a nice world? I mean, isn't that kind of what you're trying to achieve? You know, maybe you shouldn't be taking down the Ten Commandments uh, monuments and things like that. Maybe you should actually interpret them as they should be interpreted. Just as a plain logical thing. Hey, we're not supposed to have religious statues. No idols. There should only be one God, and there should be no idols. There should be no people bowing down to it and all that other stuff and killing people because you didn't bow down to my idol. Wouldn't it be a better world if people followed the second commandment? How about commandment number three, verse seven there? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You get tired of hearing people using God's name in vain? I do. You wouldn't hear people talking about God or Jesus or whatever. When you're out in public, unless they're actually talking about him. That'd be kind of nice. I'd like to see that. What's I mean, again, what's so offensive about that? You get to a lot of atheists and they just get frothing at the mouth about getting rid of the Ten Commandments. Why? How about the next one there? Uh, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor... Or shalt thou labor and do all thy work? But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and it thou shalt not do any work. You say, but I'm offended by the fact, though, there in verse 10 it says, Thy manservant nor thy maidservant. See, it's talking about slavery. Okay, excuse it as a historical document. Slavery did happen in the past, and it wasn't just with the Jewish Israelite people. The Hebrew Israelites, say it that way. It wasn't just with them. Many cultures practiced slavery in the past. So you just say, okay, well, that's what they did in the past. We're enlightened now or whatever. And so we don't do that anymore. Wouldn't it be nice just to say, okay, everybody, take a day off. I don't think working seven days a week is a very good idea. Take a day off. Rest. Why would you fight against that? Unless you have some kind of an, uh, an agenda there to try to attack a religion that hurts you which is what it's really all about in many cases. Um, how about number five? Honor thy father and mother, verse 12. Again, what is offensive about that? Shouldn't be offensive to anybody. Hey, you should honor your parents. <laughs> Why would that offend an atheist? You know, we are non-religious. We are purely rational, purely logical. Okay, why would you get offended at a Bible that says that you're to honor your parents? How about the next one there? Thou shalt not kill. You say, well, the Bible, just hold on, hold on. We're not talking about the other stuff in the Bible and other stuff in the scriptures. Those can, you can argue that and debate that back and forth and fight over. Let's stick to a subject, unless you have the attention span of a little child. Okay, stick to the subject. Thou shalt not kill. Wouldn't it be nice if people followed it, including religious people? Wouldn't that be a good thing? If all the organized religious people out there said, hey, you know what? I don't think we should go out and have crusades or holy jihad or other things like that. Wouldn't it be nice if people actually followed the Ten Commandments and that thing there? And kill is obviously in reference to murder. Obviously. You can kill a plant. You can kill an animal for food or whatever. Um, I can pluck an apple off of this tree here. 
I've effectively killed the apple's ability to grow anymore. That's no, I'm not breaking the commandment there. But uh, number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. What's wrong with that? Well, I like to cheat and whatever. You like to go through court and you like to go through divorce and all the other stuff? I would certainly hope not. Let me turn the page here. Thou shalt not steal. Commandment number eight. Thou shalt not steal. Again, why would you fight against that? It's kind of an odd thing to fight against. How about uh, thou shalt not bear false witness? Again, why would an atheist, a scientific, rational, logical person, fight against the thing of a commandment saying don't lie to people? Do you have a problem with lying or something? I mean... In terms of you yourself, do you like to lie to people? Kind of weird. How about thou shalt not covet? And it goes down through the different things there. You're not to covet things that aren't yours. Be satisfied with what you have. What's wrong with that law as a moral law? Shouldn't be anything wrong with that. So why is it that atheists reject the uh, Ten Commandments? Well, because of uh, what we'll find over here in the New Testament, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 19, we'll start there. Wherefore then serveth the law? What's the purpose of the law, the Ten Commandments? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was, it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. In other words, you're not supposed to, you can't keep the Ten Commandments and go to heaven as a result of that. Right? God doesn't expect you to be perfect and without sin and whatever else. Verse 22, But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. You see, the reality of it is, atheists... They don't want to be under a schoolmaster. Um, they want to go and they want to learn all kinds of ways to find fault with this book and to try to say that everything came about as a, as a random accident at some point in the past or something. Um, they don't like to, to think about that there's a judge up there in heaven that will judge their sins. And so they have to find a way to get rid of that. And that's the whole truth of the matter. Um, they don't want to be under that schoolmaster. And uh, that's really tragic because if atheists actually realize what the Bible really taught, that there are no church buildings, there's no Sunday best, there's no 10% tithe. God never told any Christian in the New Testament to go out and conquer these people and kill them and forcibly convert them and whatever else. God never told any Christian to say, let's build a church building and then a university and whatever and get people to come in and pay for it. That stuff isn't New Testament completely far into the pages of the New Testament. Then why do people do it? Isn't that obvious? For money and for control. Oh, well, see, I see that and that's corrupt and that's why I reject the Bible. Very foolish. Very foolish. Um, you might do well to say, you know what? Let me switch from being atheist to being agnostic. You see, an atheist... Just to explain this to some of the younger atheists out there, the, the God-hating reprobates that they are, they try to change the definition. I've seen this in the comments of my videos. Uh, atheist does not mean that we don't believe in God. It means without knowledge. No, theist, a theist is somebody who believes in God. Okay, theos is a Greek word meaning God. An A in front of it means an, I do not believe in God. Okay, a 
atheist. You don't believe in God. Agnostic, A in front of Gnostic. Gnostic means to know, to understand things, to be able to see things with your mind and whatever else. You can picture things and whatever. You're Gnostic. You're with knowledge, you see. Um, what is somebody who's agnostic? I'm without knowledge. So, logically, rationally, Consider what I've said in this little video here, and I want you to try to be honest about things and switch and say, you know, you're right. I don't really have a problem with this book. I see it as a historical document. There's some good things in the book, definitely. And the fact is that these modern Christians, they don't actually live by the Bible. I can see that. Let's be fair about it. It's not the Bible's fault if these people disobey the Bible. All right. No more is it the you know, Federal Reserve's fault because there's people out there that counterfeit the money. You know, I mean, there's a lot of issues with that, I realize. But what I'm saying is, don't blame the Bible because people don't follow the Bible. Don't blame the Bible for hypocrites in the churches. Be rational, be logical. And my challenge to you out there, if you're an atheist, switch from being an atheist to being an agnostic. And just say, quite frankly, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to remain open-minded about this. I'm not going to be some frothing at the mouth, God hating as soon as I see a Christian. Just, no, no, don't do that. I mean, I understand that organized religion creates atheists. Did you hear what I said? I'll say it one more time. Organized religion creates atheists. Did you know that? It does. Because they get you into a system that's completely foreign to what God told people to do. And then you say, this is really messed up. You come to the point where you realize how bad the system is and you say, you know what, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of this thing. But then you go out into the world and you're saying, I have questions, but I'm not going back to that thing that I came from. And what's worse, a lot of children get molested in these church buildings, both Catholic and Protestant, Muslim and whatever else. And they do it on purpose. The perverts in these places, they do it on purpose to mess up children so it will eventually turn them into atheists. And it's really, atheist is not really the real term for these people. It's more of a God-hater. And it's kind of interesting because in the Bible, the book of Revelation prophesies that in the end times, the mystery of God is finished. People can now look up and they can see God. They can know that God exists. There's the supernaturals happening on a daily basis. The book of Revelation, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so that revelation is there. There's no more mystery. God's real. And yet there are people that look up to heaven and they blaspheme him and they're yelling at him in hatred. You see, that's the real condition. People who have had their innocence robbed from them by organized religion. People who have been messed up horribly by religious people. Religious people that ignored the scriptures. How sad. So, again, my challenge to the atheists out there, if you've watched this video, please switch from being an atheist to being an agnostic. And just say, you know what, I don't know. I'll be open-minded about this. If there is a God, I'd like Him to show me. Prove to me. If you're a Christian, I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll hear your arguments. Um, remember, this ministry is hated by, the, I'd say my worst enemies are actually other Christians, professing Christians. They hate what I have to say because I come out against their system and they don't like that, especially the pastors because I hurt them, uh, you know, in the wallet. They hate me for that because you see, I know what this book actually teaches and I know that they're not following it. Please study this issue. Don't go against the Bible. The Bible's not your enemy. I'm not your enemy. Something to think about. Thank you very much for watching.